Okay, settle down. That's enough. That's enough. I feel, I feel like that might not have been sincere, but I appreciate it. <laughs> For those that aren't here, we're in Florida. We're literally, literally Hurricane Matthew is hitting right now. We're shooting this special. <laughs> Uh, no one, no, everyone else in the country is concerned. Everyone that's texted me from around the country, are you guys, is it okay? The hurricane, like, yeah, and we're just, we don't give a shit here, right? That's, <laughs> this is why people think Florida is just a fucked up stage. <laughs> it is, but I mean, it's just a little bit different here. You know, that's the, it's the thing. I, and I, trust me, I defend Florida wherever I go because I'm from here. And it's like the punchline of the country. You know, did you see what happened in Florida? Another guy hit another guy's face. Yeah, I know it happened again. <laughs> I know crazy stuff happens here, but let's not act like crazy shit doesn't happen everywhere in the country. When I, I first moved to California, one of the first things I saw were two people, middle of the day, having sex on a sidewalk at a bus stop while people just stepped over out of the bus to get on them. There was like 25 people with their phones filming it. Yeah, you know what? The next day, I didn't see that online anywhere. I didn't read it anywhere. I just have to assume in Florida, we have better journalists than the rest of the country. That's, we're reporting on stories people want to hear, right? Economy? Fuck that. We don't want to hear about that. We want to hear about the guy that hit cocaine in his ass. You know, that's... <laughs> I know crazy shit happens there, but I just feel like I have to defend it. One of my favorite stories is the guy that got uh, busted for child pornography. And then he said, oh, I didn't do that. Um, what happens is when I'm away from home, my cat walks on my keyboard. <laughs> and I came home and there was, sounds crazy, I know, but I used to have a parrot that had an online gambling problem. So I feel like <laughs> that bird lost me a lot of money right there. <laughs> my favorite story from Florida though is uh, there was a guy that almost got his hand bit up by an alligator. And so then he captured the alligator and he wrapped it up in duct tape and threw it in his bathtub, and then as revenge, repeatedly had sex with it. <laughs> it was bad, yes, I know. He's in jail, so that's okay, but even worse, even worse is the alligator had to go back to the swamp, and you know, the other gators were asking questions, right? Like, hey man, where, are you, uh, where have you been? We haven't seen you for a while. Like, Why, what, are you, uh, what have you heard? It's not true, what have you heard? I was visiting relatives on the other side of the Everglades, that's where I was at. Oh, because we heard you got deep dicked by a redneck. That's what's <laughs> blowing through these here braids of sawgrass. I have a cat. She's uh, really old. She just turned 16. Um, had to take her to the vet. Spent $800 on her, so she was about $200 away from dying. That's pretty close. <laughs> yeah. It's all I had in my credit card. I don't want to have that awkward conversation at the vet's office, you know? Sorry, Mr. Shaw, but your pet's life has been declined. Shit. <laughs> Run it again. <laughs> That's it, though, man. If you have a pet, you know you do that math, though. You're sitting in the vet's office, and you figure out how old they are divided by how many times they took a shit on your pillow, you know? It's, that's how much money you spend on them, you know? You, you just want for a moment for your animal to realize what the concept of money is. You know, just come out for a second, chest bump you, like, thanks a lot, I appreciate I'm gonna be eating ramen noodles for two weeks, but... That's not what my cat did. I took her home and she pissed on her shirt. That's how she thanked me. You know, I don't know a lot of you in here, but if I spent $800 on you, I, you'd at least tag me in a Facebook post. You know, a nice, nice emoji text, thumbs up, kidney, kidney. Appreciate that. <laughs> so she's old, I'm on the road a lot, and uh, I want to travel with her now, so I just made her into a service cat. Uh, yeah, she doesn't do anything, if you're wondering. She has no skill set. She, has the skill set of a dance mom. She just <laughs> yells about shit a lot, you know? Like, Hurry up, scoop my litter box. Gotta get the jazz tap. Something like that, I imagine. <laughs> if you crack a door open a little bit, she can get her paw in there and then just wedge her head in there and just, ga, 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 service cat, get her a vest. <laughs> Shouldn't have to do anything, because I'm sure you're aware of this. There's a lot of bullshit service animals in the world right now. I don't know if you've been on an airplane recently. You still can't get a bottle of water through security, but you can get an untrained German Shepherd that's gonna take a nervous shit at 35,000 feet because I don't like the bumpies. That's it. I'm not talking about guide dogs and I'm not talking about animals that help people who are disabled. I'm, there's a whole other category called emotional support. And it was started by, like, for instance, returning war veterans with PTSD. They give them a trained animal 
helps them deal with what they got to deal with. But uh, emotional support, it's very broad. This is what I checked off for my cat, stressed out. <laughs> Who the fuck's not stressed out? <laughs> yeah, I'm having a tough week at work. Uh, don't worry, I'm getting a monkey. Everything's gonna be okay. <laughs> Mr. Noodles comes in on Monday, no eye contact. The biter's not trained yet. Straight out the jungle, yeah, that's, rip your face clean off. Might throw some shit in your cubicle, might want to wear a hat this week, so that's... Yeah, I was sitting next to a woman on an airplane that had an overweight pug missing a leg that had a vest cable tied around it. It's pretty sure that wasn't a working animal right there. That, that breed has sleep apnea to begin with, so I don't know how it's gonna help you with the cutest little CPAP on ever, right? So I asked her, I go, all right, what's this, what's the pug do? You got me. That's what she said, you got me. Not much, I mean, sometimes I get sad and then I bring the dog with me and then I'm not sad. Yeah, yeah, that, that's why we all have pets. Uh, nobody has a dog that's crippling their self-esteem, you know? It's, you don't go to the pound, I want an animal, but a woman that's gonna make me feel fat. If you have that back there, like raccoon or sugar glider or something weird, I don't care what it is. I just want to sit in the corner and shake its head while I eat a donut. Can you make it do that? That's 70 bucks, that's all you need. Go online, they'll send you a kit, and then you can start annoying people with your untrained beast. Don't just have to be dogs. Here was a list. Dogs, cats, birds, uh, snakes. Snakes are on the list. I don't know how you're gonna keep a vest on a snake. That's gonna be tough. Maybe you cut some eye holes out of a condom, roll it on there, get a, a Sharpie right service snake. Gotta identify it, that's part of the program. Otherwise just have a bow with a rubber on it, that's weird. A service snake is crazy, right? We can all agree on that. Like, like what if you go into a bar and you're afraid of snakes? And then there's just some guy there with a mesh tank top on with a service snake, you know, just hanging out. <laughs> now you gotta bring in your service falcon, you know? <laughs> Somebody else has to bring in a service mongoose, it's not gonna end. <laughs> Emotional support, it's very broad. People need these animals, so let's let them have them and then everybody else. Because you can say you need anything for emotional support, right? For me, two things, mainly I could say, you know, food, obviously, you can take a look at me. That's a crutch in my life. I'm alone a lot on the road in hotels, so, you know, porn, that's another one. I know you don't want to hear that. Those are the facts, right? <laughs> yeah, but food's acceptable in a social setting, but porn, you know, I'm gonna have to uh, register my laptop as a service computer, you know, just get it a little vest, bring it out to an olive garden. <laughs> Sir, that's wildly inappropriate. I know, but I have anxiety, so... Uh, I'm gonna go in this booth for about five minutes. You might want to cover up your mozzarella sticks with a napkin, that's... Shield the kid's eyes, that's the splash zone right there. That's what I call that. So I was looking at some photos the other day. Remember that, when we used to print up actual photographs? We don't do that anymore, so... I had a whole box full of them, and I took them out, and I spread a bunch of them on the floor in front of me, like I was solving a murder or something. I was... <laughs> All the pieces are here, figure it out. Yeah, so I came across a couple of photos of me at a time in my life when I was doing a lot of drugs. And um, yeah, I look great. You know, I really uh, <laughs> look a lot healthier than I do now. And I stopped doing drugs. I feel like, like that's been the missing ingredient in my diet this whole time. <laughs> Less meatballs, more meth. You don't see that a lot in men's health magazines. But I feel like... Seriously, you took a... Physical of me now versus then. I'm not saying drugs are good for you. I'm just saying, saying some drugs are probably better for you than some foods, right? <laughs> yeah, like you could do heroin a half dozen times. You'll probably be okay. Try uh, shooting up ranch dressing. See what happens, right? <laughs> These are facts. Facts. Sugar, that's a drug. Is everybody aware of that? All right, I saw a documentary. On Netflix, that's what they said. They said sugar is eight times more addictive than crack. However, it's uh, exponentially more difficult to get a blowjob for a Butterfinger, so don't try that. <laughs> it's easy to get sugar, right? That's the problem, it's hard to get drugs. You can get a candy bar at a hardware store for some reason, why is that an option? Has anyone ever needed a bolt cutter and a Snickers bar at the same time? Need some Twizzlers and some wood. Make it harder. Make it harder to get food that's bad for you as it is drugs and you'd eat less, you know? Like if it was as hard to get pizza 
as it is cocaine. You know, like you'd still eat pizza, don't get me wrong, but just only on the weekends of people you trust. You know, <laughs> I'm not gonna invite that one guy who eats half the pizza. I got no money this week, but next week pizza. Yeah, you say that every week, asshole, right? Just start rubbing tomato sauce on your gums. Oh, yeah, the good day right here then. Yeah, that is, uh, that's 100% Papa John's, right? That is. Not that stepped on Little Caesars crap you tried to bring here last week. You a cop? <laughs> Be out at dinner with some people, right? Bips, hey, you notice those three guys have gotten up together, used the bathroom a couple times? You think they're doing pizza in there? Well, that's, he had some cheese in his beard, I was wondering. You can see it plain as day. <laughs> I don't know, man. It's just, it's tough for me. I just, I'm very addictive personality, you know? It's tough to eat right. They'll put calories on menus now, right? That doesn't help anybody at all. That just makes you feel shittier about what you're gonna eat, you know? It's like, eh, I guess I'm eating 3,000 calories. That's, that's what'll blow my brains out at this point. They should put the exercises you have to do next to the food and you'd eat less, right? Yeah, I'd like to get a seven layer burrito. All right, sir, you have to, you have to get on the Stairmaster back there for five hours. <laughs> Bring back a stamp receipt, then we can legally serve it to you. That's the only way. Uh, no, I'm, I'm drunk. I don't wanna do that. I just wanna, just wanna sit in this chair. What can I eat if I sit in this chair? Uh, hot sauce packets, that's all we can give it. <laughs> we don't make the laws. A lot of fat jokes tonight, guys, all right? This is where I'm at. Yeah, now this is just, this is what you got. Look, all black, that's slimming, right? A jacket, we're here in Miami, I'm not cold. This is called covering up flaws, that's what you do. A couple flaps of cloth, does the world of wonders. Yeah, I've lived in LA now about three years and I've developed a condition known as uh, taco tits. So that's not a, call this one carne asada, this one pollito, a little bit smaller for some reason. A lot of food trucks. <laughs> it's, a, it's not a good body under here. I don't know how high if, if Jason Bourne had my body, uh, the government would stop looking for him. You know, that's really, like, <laughs> it's only a threat to himself. He has uh, three to five days to live. Just put that folder back in the cabinet. <laughs> this is, the problem is that uh, all food's legal, for me at least. It's all legal, right? Anyone in here, you can go, I'm gonna order 20 cheeseburgers at any place that sells cheese. They'll, they'll just give them to you. They're not gonna take your blood pressure, check your cholesterol, they'll just give you. I go to McDonald's right now and order like 80 chicken nuggets. And I can tell the person, I'm gonna eat all these, just you know, I'm gonna pull it around to the front of your store, take my shirt off. I'm gonna dump a bunch of barbecue sauce right between my taco tits right here. I'm gonna eat them all, because it's legal, that's why. Fuck you guys, all right? If you're gonna do that, wear your seatbelt, though. That's against the law, so you gotta make sure safety first. Oreos, deep fried Oreos, that's legal. Someone just made that up. They didn't have to get like that checked by, that's just, yeah. You ever had those, deep fried, like yeah. That's some, Oreos are already bad, and then they make them way worse. They, they, they deep fry them, they drizzle some chocolate on them, sprinkled some powdered sugar, they you know, flung some Crisco and stuck a cigarette in it. It's like really bad. <laughs> You can just get as many of those as you want. <laughs> I don't know. I'm in bad shape though, guys. <laughs> Went to the doctor and uh, she told me I have uh, pre-diabetes. That's not the punchline, but thanks for laughing at that. <laughs> <laughs> pre-diabetes, I didn't know what that meant, so I asked her and she goes, okay, well that means uh, that you could get diabetes. I was like, all right, well, that means uh, everybody has pre-diabetes, right? That's, unless you got post-diabetes, that's a bad one right there. You don't want that one. Hey, uh, guess what else I have? Pre-broken leg. Don't worry about that. That seems to be, that seems to be okay. No x-rays necessary on that one. Gonna have trouble paying you because I'm a pre-millionaire as well. So uh, let's split this one, all right? And tell me what I might have. Tell me what I have. Let's work on those problems. I've got issues. Uh, for sure I have uh, acid uh, reflux, heartburn, eh. I don't do anything about it. 
nothing. I don't eat better. And I just carry around a pack of, of Tums. Like I feel them right here. It's like, <laughs> it's like my life jacket. It's, it's like the ring, Lord of the Rings. I'm rubbing it right now. Like precious, precious Tums. <laughs> it's my fat boy mints. That's what I call those. Uh, that's your body's natural way of saying, hey, uh, hey, maybe today we shouldn't have the pepper. Just shut the fuck up, stomach. I know what I'm talking about, all right? Give me some wings of beer and a medicated lightsaber. We're doing this either way, so get on board. <laughs> so I'm pretty sure, no, for certain I have that. I'm pretty sure I have uh, sleep apnea. I don't know for certain, because I don't have anybody lying next to me at night to tell me that I'm dying, but I'm pretty sure that's, that's a disease you eat your way into right there. <laughs> Not always, but generally, generally. Sleep apnea means you're overweight and then you hold your breath when you sleep. Which, uh, I don't know how out of shape you have to be to need a break during sleep, but that is really bad. That's, that's the least amount of activity your body can do. And it can't do it anymore. That's the point you've gone to. Your body has just decided to kill itself. That's the point you've gone to. All right, roll over, fatty. Put your face in the pillow right now. We're gonna, we're gonna start with the stutter breath. Get in there now. We're the fattest animal. Did you guys know that? I just made it up, but it sounds right, right? That's, you had time to mull it over, think about it, nobody yelled anything out. Fattest animal, sad, sack, sloppy. I, you know, that's, I should start saying overweight though. That's what I should start saying, not fattest. Cause I keep saying that. And then at one show, a woman yelled out, whales. What about whales? Whales are fat. She was fat shaming whales, she thought, Every picture of every whale she'd ever seen was just an obese, out of shape whale. And there was other whales out there swimming around the ocean with 24 pack abs, you know, doing CrossFit. And <laughs> Fat whale sounds like a conspiracy theory of some sort that somebody would come up with, you know? Like, yeah, yeah, I'll tell you why the sea level's rising. It ain't climate change. It's these fat ass whales, that's what's happening, right? You got liberals like Al Gore feeding them grilled cheesecake. They're getting fatter. Ocean levels rising. Don't think we don't see you too, manatees. We know what's going on there. <laughs> overweight, that's the term we gotta use. Most over, the only other animals that are overweight are the ones that live around us, right? Like your pets. Somebody here has a fat pet or you know somebody with a pet that you walk in their house, you're like, wow, well, I didn't know cats came in that shape. That's, uh, that's. <laughs> They never, they never take responsibility for it either, right? They just blame it on the animal. And I was like, I don't know, his metabolism is eating a lot of weird. I'm pretty sure he's feeding it too much. I think that is the number one answer. I've never seen a cat at a drive-thru at three in the morning, just hanging out in line with the cars. Like, Sir, you gotta be in a vehicle. We're not gonna serve you if you're not in a vehicle. I got Apple Pay. Look it up. Dogs eating ice cream, put that in YouTube. Way too many videos. Yeah, just video after video of dogs eating ice cream and the owners are just incredulous, like, guy's eating the ice cream, man, can you believe he's, yeah, well, I mean, he eats his own shit, so I'm pretty sure that uh, cream and sugar's on the menu, that's not a weird. Just make, you know, just all of our bullshit food. Raccoons, fat raccoons, right? Why, one day they're eating fish, living their life. And then they accidentally wander into someone's yard, get into a trash can, they find a cheesesteak, they're just chasing the dragon the rest of their life, you know? Just another one in here somewhere. All right, dirty diapers. We struck out the last one. Go next door. They had lasagna last week. Stop giving, you know, food and... Imagine if animals did all the drugs we did too. I was just... Like if tigers knew about cocaine, they'd leave their kids by a river or somewhere, right? Just... Be snorting lines, talking about gazelles they kill. Man, five gazelles, one hour. No one's ever done it. Balls shrinking and stuff. <laughs> so the drug thing's true, yeah. I used to, I looked great when I was doing the drugs. You stop doing them, that's what happens. You get older. Yeah, some people are nodding their heads. You know what I'm talking about. Like, I still want to do a lot of drugs. I'm just, I'm just too tired to do them. Does that make sense? <laughs> You're maturing. No, I'm exhausted. That's the issue. I can't go on a two-day bender with you. I got to get stamps. I got to iron my jeans. That's some old man shit right there. When you, when you start ironing your jeans, stop doing drugs. That's a, 
That's the tipping point right there. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what the, the, the whole war on drugs is ridiculous that we're still at war with drugs. I can't believe that, right? It's like a huge waste of money. That's where the money, you know, everyone complains about the government wasting money. War on drugs, we've been at that for like 30 plus years. And, you know, we're America, we like to win wars. We're not going to win that war, so we should get out of that, right? I'll tell you why we're not going to win it. If you're 16 years old, there's not a lot to do in this country. That's the problem. I mean, you're going to go to an ice cream social or are you going to eat mushrooms and laugh because your friend looks like a bear? That's <laughs> Get over here, Mr. Grizzly. Come on, let's take a selfie. No one's gonna believe I was partnering with a bear. Right. <laughs> yeah. This is Florida. For those at home that don't know where we're at. By the time this airs, I feel like uh, medical marijuana will be legal here, finally. And that's... Yeah. A lot of sick people here that need it. That's... A lot of ailments. Anxiety. Anxiety, yeah, that'll help. Never really, I never wigged out on pot before. That's like... Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah, I just, the whole, I feel like, you know, the medical marijuana thing, I don't know how it's not legal everywhere at this point. It doesn't make any sense. Because it's a drug. I mean, if you know somebody that is like a cancer patient or somebody in pain, you know that it helps them. You know that they've proven that it's a medicine. But now we're voting on a medicine. I don't remember voting on Oxycontin or Valium. They just made that shit legal, right? You know, they, there was no rallies for Lipitor or anything like that. Just kicking a hacky sack around. Let's make an omelet in this bitch. Come on, put some shrimp in it. I did like a half dozen shows at medical marijuana rallies. That's really the, what the, where the problem is. That's why it hasn't become legal because people don't take that shit seriously, you know? It's always just a bunch of jam bands and gyro stands, you know? There's not a lot of <laughs> legislation being passed or anything. <laughs> Never been to a pharmaceutical convention, but I imagine it's very organized, right? It's together, right? It's in a, a Marriott somewhere. There's PowerPoint presentations going on. There's suits and ties. They're giving out fishing trips and pens. And every pot rally I've been to just starts off with some random guy in a tie-dye stumbling on stage. Hey, everybody, check it out. I made a bong out of a clear net. Yeah. <laughs> Instructions to follow. Hey, take a look at this pie chart. Uh, that is an actual pie. Billy's mom big dad. We're hungry as shit here. <laughs> Divvy that up. It's good intentions. Don't get me wrong. Like, because there's always a guy that wrote a speech. And, uh, but that day he decided to eat a pot brownie. Uh, so he lost the speech. He's going to wing it. That's a good idea when you're high. So he's just up there struggling, tripping out. And I was like, ah. Glaucoma, something with that. Uh, itchy clothing. <laughs> it always ends the same way with the worst argument ever. Don't use this argument if you're pro pot. It's from the earth, right? I mean, why would God have put it here if he didn't want us to smoke it? It is from the earth. Just want to be like, yeah, excuse me. Uh, yeah, everything's from the earth. I don't know if you knew that or not. We didn't, we didn't get a shipment in from Mars. I don't know if you're going to start smoking arsenic or do a bong hit of lava. Let's settle down on that argument right there. Right? Get Sanjay Gook out here. He's got a tie. He did two documentaries on it. It's got to be true. You know, I'll be happy for once it's completely legal, the people that own the head shops, you know, the paraphernalia stores that sell all the stuff for pot. But just because they can finally be themselves. Because you know? they can't... Everything in the stores are pot, and they can't, like, admit that. They have to pretend like it's... Oh yeah, this thing with a oh, yeah, that six foot glass bong with a, the Game of Thrones theme on it right there. And that's for flavored tobacco right there. And if you mention pot in this store, I will throw you out right now. We also have scales for weighing jewelry, if you're into that. And uh, we got a shaving cream can with a false bottom. Put your house key on it, front porch, totally believable. No one else. Very discreet. And then there's a, a Tony Montana shirt with, behind it with a weed leaf for some reason. I was like, even smoke pot, I'm pretty sure. Does that shirt exist? <laughs> Man. If you do drugs, be careful. Because uh, I don't know if you've ever seen the show Lock Up. You ever seen that show? It's on rerun now, but they bring the cameras inside of the prison and they show you around and they scare you so you don't think bad for like two weeks. Not everybody, but I'd say over 50% of the people in there are there as drug offenders. 
And the, uh, the average sentence for the drug offender is longer than everything except murder. Everything. Burglary, aggravated assault, uh, sexual assault. Messed up, right? So if you ever get pulled over and you have drugs in your car, you know, you should just rape the cop. <laughs> You're saving jail time, all right? Just bend him with a cruiser, take him with a nightstick, whatever term you want to use. You're gonna have great street cred when you get to prison. Like, what, you rob a bank? Yeah, I fucked the cop. So, uh... <laughs> Guess who gets bottom bunk? Get out of there. Get me some cigarettes. I'm running this cell block now, right? I'm running it. So that's that. All the fun stuff's bad for you there, right? Food, drugs, alcohol. Everybody's drinking tonight, right? Okay. I like drinking. You know, I don't I don't like uh I don't like people that drink though. It's, a lot of bad drinkers out there, right? Yep. Probably one here in the corner. All right, yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> Doesn't pay attention. All right. <laughs> yeah, the problem with bad drinkers, though, is there's no, uh, there's no penalty for them. They just wake up the next morning, they do it all over again. They're just assholes, right? There should be. I have a solution. As we license everybody to drink, right? You don't have to take a test. You turn 21, you get a drinking license then you can lose that drinking license the same way you can your driver's license if you don't, you know, drink properly. All right, not popular. All right, that's uh, a... <laughs> you need a license to fish. You guys are aware of that, right? To catch a bass, you need a license. If you order eight shots of Jaeger, I feel like there should be some paperwork involved, right? Just hand that over. You should have to look at their drinking history for a minute. Like, all right, it says here, uh, five years ago, you masturbated in a bar window. All right, right? Yeah, that's on the list. I don't need to look at that. You're not allowed to drink tonight. That's... It's like a point system, right? I don't have it all worked out. It's like a point system. Here's what I have so far for the drinking license. Um, if you're in a bar and you just go, woohoo, that's a warning right there, right? <laughs> Whatever's going on in your head, shut that down right now. You wanna <laughs> throw a dart at the back of somebody's leg? That's not funny, right? You vomit in a friend's car, three points on your drinking license. Uh, you take a shit in public, immediate suspension of your license. You gotta take a year off, regroup, get an instructor, you can't. Just do that in a parking lot. You're not allowed, right? <laughs> Makes a little sense now, right? Because right now there's nothing. There's nothing to stop you if you're a bad drinker. Nothing. You, the one thing you can do, you can get a DUI. But if you get a DUI, they take away your driver's license. But, you know, you can still drink. <laughs> that doesn't make sense now that I said that out loud, right? <laughs> hey, no more drive. You know what? Keep drinking, though. Really good at it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Little point two three. You should be dead. You're like an expert. Yeah, put a beer in a bag, piss on some doorsteps. That's the look we want. Ride a bike to work. That'll help your self-esteem. Nah, you just take the drinking license, you let them drive. And... Red light cameras? Nobody likes those, right? Okay. Okay, but you take that same technology, put it in a bar. And then if you were hitting on somebody you normally wouldn't hit on sober, you get a ticket in the mail, right? <laughs> Just a picture of you. Look, he almost fucked. Look at that. That's a stool. You tried to have sex with a stool for some reason. Eight points on your license. Get some tweezers. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if it would stop drunk driving, though. That's the thing. Because nobody really wants to drink and drive, right? Nobody ever starts off the night, let's get drunk and hit a dude on a bike. No one ever says that, but... <laughs> It happens, right? So, you know why? Because when you're, when you're sober, you're making good decisions. When you drink, your decision-making goes out the window. Yeah, when I'm sober, I'm like, yeah, I don't drink and drive. Ten beers later, you know, I'm eating a taco out of a trash can or something. You know, like, <laughs> car keys have lost priority at that point. Don't drink and drive. I drink a bunch of tequila, and now I'm getting a blowjob from some lady with an Adam's apple. I'm like, all right. <laughs> Ma'am, sir, if you get put on a turtleneck or a scarf, that'd be great. I'm okay with this, but I just need... Some visual aids. All right. <laughs> Some people don't like the kid around about that, drunk driving. Yeah. It's a serious thing, though, I understand. Sometimes people get killed by a drunk driver, and then you see it on the news or read it online. They interview the family, the neighbors, and the friends, and it's like always a good person. And then you're just like, yeah, that sucks. You got to think just once in a while, though. There's got to be a case where a drunk driver gets it right and kill a dickhead, right? That's, they'd be interviewing the neighbors and the friends and family and be like, yeah, he was, uh, he was sort of a prick, actually. We feel, uh, 
We feel really good about it around here. He, uh, he kicked my dog last week. We're going to cut his brake lines anyway. Sort of a godsend. So, uh, pretty much my whole life has been a series of poor decisions. Okay, not the joke again. So <laughs> that <I> was... <laughs> that's, that's the difference between a motivational speaker and a comedian, basically. Tony Robbins made all the right decisions, and then, you know, I'm up here talking about it. I fucking don't process food correctly, and I did a lot of drugs. <laughs> I don't know why that is though, man. I just, I made like a, so, a series of just shitty decisions. Like my mom did a really good job raising me. I just, some other things, you know, that I'm not sure, you know, I could blame my dad. He wasn't around at all, like ever. You know, I'm not trying to make it sad. I'm just facts. You know, that's how I know I'm not famous yet. He hasn't tried to contact me directly. You know, that's, <laughs> ask for money or anything. <laughs> Literally the last time I saw my dad, I was probably like 12. It was around Christmas, and it was like the first Christmas where I had money to buy gifts. Do you remember that when you're a kid and you've done a bunch of bullshit chores? And you're like, I'm gonna feel like an adult. I'm gonna get some gifts this year. And uh, they were shitty gifts, because you had probably like $21 to spend. But there was a thought there that's probably better than, anyone, you know, than an adult would give you. So you, 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 they were appreciated, you know? Like my mom, my mom liked sailing. So I got her a Velcro wallet with sailboats on it. I know, she probably didn't use that. But that's... <laughs> My grandmother liked to cook, so uh, I got her a wok. I mean, she wasn't Asian, but I like stir fry. It was on sale, so let's <laughs> hook it up. And then my mom was like, we're gonna see your dad. Do you wanna get him a gift? But like, I, I know you people better than I know my dad, so I didn't know what, to, you know, I didn't have any thought process there. So I was like, all right. And I just, I just pointed at the first thing I saw in the store, and it was, it was steel wool. You know what that is? It's a shitty gift. That's what that is. That's it's not a good gift for a son to give to a dad unless he's a, a dishwasher or a carpenter or something else, which he wasn't. <laughs> That's like literally the, <laughs> the number one gift that you give a, a deadbeat dad. He'd be like at the deadbeat dad Olympics, top podium, holding on to a piece of steel wool, singing his anthem, cats in the cradle in the silver spoons, and he been in my Yeah. <laughs> so my mom and him were divorced, and um, she, uh, you know, she's trying to be a good parent and not show how much her distaste she had for my father, but so she goes, are you sure that's what you want to get him? But I know inside, she was like, let's wrap that shit up right now. That's, that is a great gift. <laughs> and here's what my mom did to get over on my dad a little bit. She put it, like, in progressively larger boxes, you know, just like a Russian nesting doll of until it just got this big, and I walked in with a giant gift, like a little kid, like, hey, Dad. He's like, oh, shit, I didn't expect to get that big of a gift. And I just kept unwrapping them all, unwrapping until he got to the final box, and it was just a, a six-pack of Brillo right there, right? That's, yeah, that means you're a shitty dad. I didn't say that, but that, I think the message was sent there. You know? So maybe that's it. I don't know. Did a lot of drugs when I was young. Should have died a bunch of times. Yeah, ketamine, they're using that to treat depression now. That's not what we used it for, but okay, that's... <laughs> GHB, we did that on purpose. That's known as the date rape drug now, but that's not what it was known as back then. You know, we, it's, things change, you know? Things start in one way, then they go through some sort of transformation. Sometimes they get a little seedy. You know, I remember when a massage just meant you were going to get, you know, your back worked on. And now you got to specify that, right? Just, that's a tough job, massage therapy. That's the only job where you have to tell somebody whether they're getting jerked off at the end or not. You know, just, you never be getting your taxes done. Like, this is all about deductions. Just, you know, there's no hand jobs at the end of this, right? So that's what happened. GHB, it's a natural occurring, like, you know, chemical in your body. And it started off as a workout supplement. People would take, like, a cap full of GHB, They'd work out, take a cap full of GHB, and then they'd, they'd pass out. They'd go into a really shallow breathing state and almost being, you know, almost dead. But then they'd wake up and, like, ready to work out again. And then somebody figured out if you took a little bit less, it was, like, fun. It was like taking ecstasy. You'd dance, you'd party. And, and then some Russian guys, that's what I assume, figured out that if you put it in women's <laughs> drinks, you could take advantage of them. So that's... It's a difference. It's a difference if you're doing drugs that you decide to take versus somebody giving to them and you're not knowing, you know? 
I mean, the best analogy I can come up with is if you just had to get up early, so you set your alarm for 5 a.m. and you knew that you were going to have to wake up at that hour versus somebody sneaking in your house and then waking you up <laughs> by raping you. I feel like that's the best analogy. So big difference there. So, um, so we did this on purpose. And here's, this is why that poor decisions. I'm telling like, I, I should have died a million times. Um, one weekend, we were up like the whole weekend and then one of our friends suggested, hey, we should do like a Kappa G and then pass out. And we did that, but we also decided to go snorkeling. <laughs> and I don't know if you were paying attention, uh, the GHB makes you almost stop breathing and snorkeling pretty much breathing. That's what that exercise is. <laughs> but I'm alive, I'm here. I don't know how that happened, but good day of snorkeling. Let me tell you, man, this one fish was looking at me like she wanted to, okay, that's not how it was, but that's. <laughs> Good thing I'm alive, though. That would be a bad way to die. They'd scoop me up off the reef and be like, well, uh, we don't know how he's died, but we do know he was raped earlier. So that's uh... a... <laughs> so that's it. I don't know. Maybe I, maybe, maybe I just didn't have religion in my life. I don't know if people are religious here. I was not religious. One, one summer we went to church camp. I was like, that's it, God. This is your opportunity. Convert me right now. I've been raised as a heathen. And so we got on this bus and we went to church camp in Lakeland, Florida. And uh, this is what they decided to do. Uh, first thing out the gate, they got us into an auditorium. And then um, the, the minister's son or the, I don't know which ones can have sex. The, you know, not with kids, with women, you know what I'm talking about. But that's, uh, <laughs> all right. But uh, whichever one, I think it was a minister's son. He got up there a cappella with a microphone. And this is, this is how they decided to try and convert us. This started off. Jesus, Jesus, rocks you, rocks you. Jesus, Jesus, rocks you. Awesome. All right, I'm out, Jesus. I gave you a shot, all right? Just start up the bus, get me back on there. I'm pretty sure Freddie Mercury wouldn't be allowed at this church camp right here, so it's a weird choice of songs. We're in Florida, this is where Jesus lives. I don't know if you know that or not. In Orlando, there's a religious theme park called Holy Land. Holy Land Experience. Jesus is there. They crucify him three times a day. It's in the brochure. <laughs> I swear to Allah. I'm sure it's a great theme park. It's in Orlando. All the best theme parks are there. So I know you go in, there's probably a locust exhibit and you get to stone to somebody to death at the end. Yes. I'm just saying, if you go, I'm just saying, if you go to the Holy Land experience, don't, don't bring your kids. They don't want to go to Orlando to meet Jesus. They want to, and they might have a good time, but they're going to have to stay in the same hotel with all the other kids, you know, with mouse ears on and Hulk shirts and, they're just standing there with a robe on and a fake Moses beard, like, all right, this sucks. This crown of thorns hurts, it's supposed to, all right? If you don't bleed, we're not going to IHOP. I don't know, it seems like it might be fun to be religious. I don't know, I'm just not, I'm just, that's how it is. I try, I travel a lot, so sometimes I listen. Sometimes you don't get any radio stations, so I listen to AM radio, and occasionally prayer hour will come on. You know what that is? It's like people call in with prayers and then they say them over the radio and then everybody prays for them, power, positive thinking, you know, whatever. Which is a good idea, but uh, one time when I was driving through New Mexico, I don't think they had a good screener for the prayers because there was a lot of shitty prayers that got through. There's, <laughs> there were some legit ones like, please, you know, please pray for a man with diabetes or cancer. But then one of them was, please pray for a woman to get her garage door fixed at a good price. <laughs> Yeah, I hope God has a pop-up blocker for prayers, because that's like getting a dick pump ad in the middle of this. Can you imagine? <laughs> Some kid that's just starving, you know, somebody like, please, God, I need medicine and food. Like, Hold on, skinny. I'm talking to Home Depot right now. They're trying to highball me on these garage door springs for some bitch in Ocala. All right, that's, I don't think he'd say bitch, but whatever he would say. Maybe he'd be angry by that point. <laughs> Customer service sucks. <laughs> mm. Well, I hope God doesn't exist, though. Seriously, I'm a compulsive gambler. I made a lot of deals with God, and I didn't hold up my end of the bargain <laughs> at all. I'd just be like, please, God, let me win this bet. I'll never gamble again. And I'd win it, and I'd be like, well, I never got a confirmation email. So I'm going to assume <laughs> that one hit the firewall. Very tech-savvy God in my jokes. <laughs> He's a computer programmer. Yeah, so addiction, maybe that's it, right? I go, to, uh, I go to Gamblers Anonymous, GA, that's what it's called. It's just like Alcoholics Anonymous and NA and all that. 
A little bit different, though. Uh, an NA and AA for the year anniversary, you get a poker chip, which would be inappropriate for Gamblers Anonymous. So we get little miniature Corona bottles and needles. So that's pretty... <laughs> not true. <laughs> not true. I went to a GA meeting in uh, Vegas one time, Las Vegas. And it was packed. But with people that live in Las Vegas that are addicted to gambling, I was like, that, you should, you should probably leave this town. There's, get on a highway. I feel like that's step one right there, right? It's a bad place to live if you're addicted to gambling. It's like being an alcoholic and living inside of a whiskey barrel. You know, it's not advised. You can gamble on elections now. I don't know if you knew that or not. Yeah. Any presidential race, they'll have odds on that, which has got to be the worst way to lose your money gambling is politics. It's bad enough sports. But politics, how are you gonna explain that to your family, right? Hey, why don't we have a house anymore? I'll tell you why. Because uh, Latinos didn't come out to vote in New Hampshire. That's why, so I read a bad poll on that one. I have a friend that's never voted for president ever, which if you're gonna do, you need a good reason. He's a moron, so that's what he says. I don't vote for president because it's just rich people running for president, and then it's rich people running the country. I was like, yep, well, I'm, I'm pretty sure that's who should be running the country. Yes. I don't want to elect a president that just got their power shut off. You know, I feel like <laughs> I want him better with money than me, let's say. That's, yeah, I just saw the commander in chief at a check cashing store. That was pretty cool. He was getting a payday advance for an Xbox, signed a coin star receipt for me. So. My friend's a conspiracy theorist too. He was like, I'll tell you what else, all the presidents, all of them, they all went to Harvard or Yale. I was like, yep, that's, uh, that's also good right there. No, that works. <laughs> Nobody wants to see a diploma in the Oval Office from the University of Phoenix. You know, it's not gonna, that's still a lot of confidence in the country. Yeah, I got all these degrees in my underwear. No pants for those degrees right there. <laughs> Typed up one of my finals papers with my dick, so that's pretty cool. <laughs> Try that, you Ivy League snobs. Good imagery right there. There's at least four guys in here that are gonna try to type with their dicks later. So that's, you're gonna need a standard keyboard, no touch screens. Some fishing weights, three pulleys. All right, stop making sure. <laughs> but anyways, it's gonna be okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna start doing steroids. <laughs> they don't test for that in comedy. So uh, I'm gonna break all the records. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know why people care that athletes do steroids. Who gives a shit, right? It's entertainment. All of our entertainment entertainers should be on drugs, you know? You wouldn't listen to music made by people that weren't on drugs. Why would you watch sports? <laughs> right? I want them to be as big and strong as possible. You know, I don't want to go back and watch football when they had leather helmets on, everyone weighed 150 pounds, and they gently shoved each other out of bounds, you know? I want to see some roided up linebacker hit a guy so hard a spleen shoots out of his ass, you know, just <laughs> flies into some kid's lap. I hope he signs this. He's a pro bowler. I'm going to sell that on eBay later. Yeah, if you're against steroids, you're a hypocrite, because everybody in here does something to enhance their lives or something, yeah. Coffee, caffeine, you guys drink that? Yeah, cheaters. You're all cheaters. Viagra, you know who you are. That's... Pacemakers, right? But we're not going to put an asterisk on Grandpa's tombstone like, you know, the last nine years. Uh, kind of bullshit, if you ask me. I feel like it was cheating, right? We're all agreeing right across that off. Put 75 on there. It's not going on the Hall of Fame. Not for, not for Grampies. <laughs> I don't know. I'm getting older, though. That's the thing. Maybe it'll help out a little bit. A little HGH. <laughs> you know what I've noticed getting older, though? The older I get, like, the less that I care uh, if people see my dick. I don't know if that's a normal progression. <laughs> I'm not going to take it out. Don't worry. But if it fell out by accident, I tuck it back in. Apologize to the front row. Bad zipper. All right. <laughs> True. I went, I, went to, I went to high school here in Miami and I would sweat in gym class and I'd never take a shower because I didn't want to take my shorts off because I didn't want anyone to see, you know? And that's when people should have seen my dick. That's when it was at its top fighting weight, you know? It was like aligned correctly. It was all the same color and now it's, it's splotchy for some reason. I don't know why that happened. Never taking it out the suntan, but it needs to see a dermatologist for some reason. That's... Hair's not growing back in properly. I don't know if they make Rogaine for your crotch, but I need that product, stat. That's... There's something there, right? There's something with, like, body image and wisdom. There's some correlation there. That's why when you go to the gym, it's just the oldest guys naked flaunting around, like, hey, everybody, I'm dying. There's my dick. Check it out, right? What is that? A leaf on there? 
Uh, I used to be an environmental biologist, and uh, okay, thanks. That's, uh, <laughs> yeah, I used to be an environmental biologist. Um, got out of that because uh, we're all doomed. So um, can recycle if you want. It doesn't matter. I was on the inside. It doesn't matter because apparently where we've been destroying the planet is the uh, the towel section of hotels. If you've been in there recently, next to the towels, there's always a little placard with a picture of a lemur on it. Help us save the planet. Hang up your towels, reduce water usage and detergent, and we'll, uh, we'll save the earth together. I don't feel like the, uh, the animals are seeing that towel money. You know, there's no way there's a gorilla somewhere holding a picture of me holding up a towel that I've used for the second straight day to, you know, wipe off my girlfriend's stomach with. I feel like they don't know. <laughs> Sacrifices. Everybody should be laughing that joke, all right? Right side of the room, don't act like you just dry your hair with those things, be honest. When you get into a hotel, you're a disgusting animal. That's why you pay the extra money. You stay in a hotel, you shave your pubes, you let somebody else vacuum them up, right? That's, that's gonna clog up your Dyson right there. That's $500. Wind tunnel technology. Towels, that's where the whole planet's crumbling. Towels, what about the beds in hotels? There's a lot of drunken vacation sex that happens there. Extra kids are born we didn't mean to have. There's already 7 billion people on the planet. They really cared about the environment. They'd have complimentary contraceptives on the nightstand, you know, like condoms or a chimpanzee-shaped dispenser that shoots out morning after pills, you know, something. <laughs> something that says we care about the rainforest here at the Red Roof Inn. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so, I was in a restaurant the other day and I saw a baby crying. Maybe like two years old. I'm not a baby. Just it was just staring at me. And I was like, yeah, that's the shit right there. I'd love to be able to just cry, right? That's how I feel all the time. Just, ah, someone give me an iPad and a sippy cup right now. Because you can do it when you're a kid, but when you're an adult, it's just not a good look. You know, especially as a guy, right? Guys aren't allowed to cry. Bunch of dudes here in the front row. You guys, you ever cry in public? Nah, not allowed to, right? Women, yeah, have at it. You can cry right now, people will help you out. They'll bring you a bottle of water, a tissue, make a phone call for you, you know? <laughs> Guy wanders into a food court, just starts bawling. Guess what, now you're a viral video, right? <laughs> Sad guy weeps at Cinnabon. Two million hits on that one, that's... Got to store it up as anger, right? To so just punching some guy at a bar. I'm sorry, it's my wife, it's not you. I feel like that's how I cry with my fist right there. <laughs> it's healthy though. This is why women on average live longer than men because it's healthy to, to cry, let out endorphins, stress, you know? And some women will say, ah, it's okay. I, I want my guy to be sensitive and he can cry. That's such bullshit. Yeah, next time, try this guys. Next time your wife or your girlfriend's crying, just sit down next to her and start, uh, start crying with her. <laughs> She'll stop crying. That's how jarring that is, sir. She'll just emotionally reboot, like, what the fuck are you doing? That's, uh, I cry, you yell. That's the deal we have worked out. So if you could go break something in the living room, I'd feel a lot better about this. Yeah, we need an excuse. Women can always say, I'm sorry, I'm crying. I'm very hormonal. I'm on my period. And look, I don't know what a period's like. It seems crazy from the outside looking in, but you have at it. Do whatever you got to do for that. But to be fair, we have hormones too testosterone, 10 times the amount that women have. We have that every single day, not five or seven days, whatever your cycle is, every single day. It's okay if you wanna yell at me on your period, just don't get mad when I, you know, fuck the neighbor. That's all I'm saying, that's, <laughs> it's that time of the month again, I know, it seemed like yesterday, but she had glitter on her boobs, that's my trigger right there, so that's, walk a mile on our penis. <laughs> These are facts, remember I told you I used to be a scientist? Trust me, all right, I looked it up on Wikipedia. These are all fact checked. 10 times the amount that women have. We have uh, the only time that's not true is when a couple falls in love, a guy's goes down and a woman's goes up. And then when you have kids, a guy's testosterone goes down again. So by the time you're married and 40 and you have three kids, basically you're just like a, you know, a woman wearing Dockers. That's what you become. <laughs> All right. So we, we start with cats, we end with cats. It's a cat sandwich, that's what we do here. It's like an Oreo cookie, two cats on each end with a lot of 
dick and drug jokes in the middle. That's... <laughs> so I used to have four cats. Pretty cool, I know. And uh, I found them all so they had some sort of defect associated with them. Uh, yeah, like one of them used to be abused, so it was neurotic. It would overgroom itself, so half its fur was missing. It looked like a, a Tim Burton character or something. Else. Another one had urinary tract infection. I had to give it special pills and food. Another one was molested by its uncle. I don't like to talk about that, but... <laughs> From the streets! Street cats! Yeah. So, I used to find homes for cats, but I, I, don't, I don't do that anymore. I'm on the road. So, one of the last ones I found was a mother cat. Five newborn kittens. You ever seen kittens when they're first born? Look like little rats. Eyes are still closed. And kittens, I don't know if you know this or not, the mother has to, like, lick their genital area to make them pee and poop, which, if we had to do that, There'd be a lot less people here tonight. That's that. <laughs> in general, if that's how we operate, right? It's your turn to lick the baby's ass. Get in there. I licked it all week and peed in my beer. I'm done with that activity. You tap out after one kid. I can't taste it anymore. It's like batteries on my tongue. I'd like to enjoy food at some point, so. Yeah, so they were tiny things. And when it was really sick, lethargic, it was like the run to the litter. Something was wrong with it. And then the next day, the mother, like, ate. Yeah, ate the sick kitten. That's what they do. Animals, they sense something is wrong or off, and then they just, you know, they just snuff them out. Which, again, we don't do, but if you think about it. Right? You ever been to Walmart Sunday morning, seen those? None of those people should have been baby snacks when all that DNA passed along. <laughs> yeah, I'm just saying, let's say from now on, you had to have the kids, and once they were born, if you sensed they were gonna be a douchebag, you just make a sandwich or something, right? A wrap if you're on a diet. Hold the mail. Don't think about your own kids in this joke, right? That's... <laughs> if you're here tonight, you're telling me, if you, if you have multiple kids and you're here tonight, you're telling me if you could have, there's not one you wouldn't have eaten? Seriously, that's... You know it is. Burn down the shed. I'm not saying you have to eat your kids. But let's just say it was legal to eat your kids till they were eight years old. You didn't have to do it, but your kids knew that you could do it, right? Just the, the threat was there. Like, you know, they would just be mowing the lawn, clean up the house. They wouldn't sass you in public anymore. I want this cereal. You better shut up or I'm firing up the grill right now, right? Get in the car. All right, I'm done. Thank you, guys. All right, that's... They'd be mowing the lawn, cleaning up the house. They wouldn't sass you in public anymore. I want this cereal. You better shut up or I'm firing up the grill right now, right? Just get in the car. That was literally the last joke right there. That was the last word I had to say on the whole fucking thing and you dropped a bottle on the last fucking word. How are we supposed to end that now? This, I was gonna... <laughs> It, this is how it was gonna go. This is how it was gonna go. Get in the car, and then I was gonna be like, thank you, guy, and you're fucking goddamn... Gotta shoot the whole thing again. The whole thing we have to do. We can't just pick up that... <laughs> fucking weak bladdered motherfuckers. Lisa made an announcement at the beginning. Hey, go to the bathroom now. Not one person got up when you could have. Ah, hey, I'll get through it, because that... Okay. I hope all of you die in a hurricane. That got up and go. <laughs> hurricane Matthew sweeps you away. Ah, <laughs> oh, that was tragic. No, that guy got up to piss 10 minutes into the special. <laughs> I've known him my whole goddamn life. Okay, here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna do the last line because it's the last fucking line. And then I need to say, and then I need to say, hey guys, thank you. And then you go, and then I'm gonna walk off, and then we're gonna do some, some other things real quick. Can we do that? Son of a bitch. How does the last line even go? Okay, okay, here we go. You ready? <laughs> Shit. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Shut up. <laughs> All right. All right. Okay, here we go. 
All right, I'm not saying you have to eat your kids, but let's just say it was legal to eat your kids till they're eight years old. All right, you don't have to do it, but your kids know that you can do it. Just a threat is there, right? It's, they'd be mowing the lawn, cleaning up the house. They wouldn't sass you in public anymore. Like, I want this cereal. You better shut up or I'm firing up the grill right now, right? Just, all right, let's hold on a second. Now that sucks, because you guys didn't even fucking laugh because you just heard the joke. Of course you just heard the fucking joke. Don't sit there and be like, we heard this one already. You guys suck. We're gonna have to edit all this fucking laughter from behind my head so you can't see my fucking mouth moving. What are they laughing at? Uh, we're gonna do it one more time. All right? I need you to laugh appropriately. That's the last fucking joke. You did it good, good the first time, then this guy fucking panicked over here and knocked his beer by, huh? Any more? All right. <laughs> You guys ready? One more time? And then I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say goodbye and then you're supposed to clap a lot. I have to fucking coach you guys. When do you laugh? When the fucking punchline is, Charlie? What do you mean, like? Wow, this is gonna be good. Cause I, I, I doubt we're gonna get this on the first take. Cause I feel like you guys are gonna laugh at the wrong parts now and it's just gonna, it's gonna look stupid. Yeah, we're almost done. Do you really? Holy shit, Charlie. All right, no, 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 no. Okay, here, you guys ready? You guys ready? All right. Yeah. Okay. I'm not saying you have to eat your kids. But let's just say it was legal to eat your kids till they were eight years old. You didn't have to do it, but your kids knew that you could do it, right? Just the, the threat was there, like. You know, they would just be mowing the lawn, cleaning up the house. They wouldn't sass you in public anymore. I want this cereal. You better shut up or I'm firing up the grill right now, right? <laughs> Get in the car. All right, I'm done. Thank you, guys. All right, that's... <laughs>